How the 16 Personalities Find Comfort. The framework I'm using in this video relates to a type's third slot function, which is something that is a source of comfort, relief, and also indulgence at times as well. The third slot function is often referred to as the child function because of the playful way in which types express it. As always, this is theoretical speculation, but this notion matches up very consistently from what I've seen from types in the wild. Ultimately, in a field of untested theories, experience and observation should be the barometers for whether something is accepted. One final note, the comfort I'm talking about here is psychological in nature, as opposed to, you know, sitting in your pyjamas, drinking tea all day, which apparently some people do. ESTPs and ENTPs. Extroverted feeling. Both of these types manoeuvre through life on their wilds, their nows, and their adaptable and logical minds. They tend, naturally, towards independence. At times, this can mean that they have a lot of floating and fluid relationships, where people enter and leave their life. Or more likely, they enter and leave other people's lives. Connecting with others and fostering and maintaining relationships is something that gives them a great deal of comfort. I've also seen this manifest in the desire to lead and to build communities. This can be simply being the person in their friendship group who arranges meetups and plans things and drags people out of their comfort zone or out of their houses or actually adopting an official leadership role in some other area. It's them really embracing that FE function, cultivating a sense of unity between people. Instead of their usually roguish charm and challenging nature, they bring people together and bridge those gaps, which is actually something they love. This role of peacemaker and dealmaker is one that isn't often associated with either of these types, but it really should be. Being in situations where they can read people, adapt, and react to others is very enjoyable to them. In fact, I've heard from both of these types that they love to connect people together, such as setting people up with each other in relationships, friendships, or as collaborative and business contacts. One reason I think this appeals to them is that they don't actually have to maintain that connection once they've set it up. They can be the facilitators and initiators without having to micromanage things long term after. So both types gain a lot of psychological comfort from being more relational, from connecting with people, or connecting people together, in being part of a group, or leading a group. Neither type likes to be boxed in or trapped. Sometimes relationships of all kinds bring with them obligations that can elicit those feelings. So when ESTPs and ENTPs can go about relationships and flex their FE in the way I've mentioned, it becomes more enjoyable and more comforting for them. INFJs and ISFJs. Introverted thinking. Types have a playful relationship with their third slot function. This means that it can often become the focal point for recreational activities and hobbies. For example, I've often seen INFJs and ISFJs really love puzzles, brain teasers, strategy games, and anything that allows them to flex that hyper-analytical part of themselves. I think it also shows up in the extent to which they will indulge in self-directed study for the pure enjoyment of it. Whenever these two types are given the chance to solve problems in some kind of TI way, you'll see them get energized and have a lot of fun. But more broadly, these two types always have their reasoning to fall back on, a logical framework that they can check in with during chaotic times in their lives. Both INFJs and ISFJs, as I've said before, are like hybrids between feeling and thinking types. So it's very natural for them to integrate this part of themselves. When they are in doubt, uncertain, or just encountering those times in life where they are rushed off their feet and up against it, they can stop and deep dive into that part of themselves that loves to investigate, research, inspect, break down, and go over things with a fine tooth comb. When these two types can say, I know this, this makes sense to me, I understand, I get the underlying logic, it's a source of much comfort to them. ENFJs and ENTJs. Extroverted sensing. Both of these types are high energy and full on. Burnout is a far greater risk for them than stagnation. These types get their psychological comfort from the sensory and sensual. Food, drink, exercise, um, other activities. It's about embracing that SE sense of flow, where you move through life and things are just happening. You're happening. You're bouncing off the world and things feel electric and alive. They love that. They can eat that up. And counterintuitively, it gives them comfort. I think it's because for them, this type of flow state feels effortless. They're not in their usual state of trying to make things happen, or convince people, or lead people, or call the shots. Instead, they're just rolling with life, being more of a passenger than the driver, more the recipient of life's joys than the initiators and givers. ESFJ 
an ESTJ, extroverted intuition. This might be the most underrated third slot function. It seems like if you don't have an intuitive function, front and center, as one of your top two, people don't appreciate it within a person. Both of these types are doers. They are on the go people. They want their days to be filled with activity. In that sense, they really do live life. Two onlookers seeing them fly by in a whirlwind of activity, it might be easy to miss that they invest a lot of time in trying new ideas and approaches. They are creative people. It's just that they imbue the things they're already doing and working on with that creativity, as opposed to having it front and center. Their creativity is grounded and in service of tangible things. Whenever they get to express this side of themselves, it's a great source of comfort for them. Another way they express any is socially, especially in conversation. Jumping from one topic to another, bantering, being witty, exploring different perspectives, opinions, and angles in a discussion or debate. This is very rejuvenating for them. Yes, they are both extroverts, so they'll be energized by interacting with people on average, but their any dictates the way in which they'll express that extroversion. Because they are typically diligent, organized, and structured, dipping into their any gives them a release from that, a way to find novel ideas that can be integrated into their life as a way to keep things fresh. INTJ and ISTJ, introverted feeling. FI is often associated with individualism and values. It's a way of filtering things that you like and dislike. Both ISTJs and INTJs are pragmatic, hard-nosed, and matter-of-fact. This dedication to rationality and finding objectively good ways to do things is quite pervasive in their life. However, it stands in opposition to personal preference, i.e. liking things just because you like them, and not because they are objectively the best approach, or have been appraised impartially. These two types gain enjoyment, comfort, and relief from indulging in their personal interests. Things that elicit the sentiments of, this is meaningful to me, I resonate with it, I stand with or for this. This can simply be things that they enjoy for their own sake, as opposed to things that have utility and functional value, or more grand things, like causes they believe in, their political persuasions, or the life philosophy they want to live out. For these types, FI is like their fuel, their why. Developing and reaffirming this part of their personality is deeply psychologically comforting for them. ENFP and ESFP, extroverted thinking. Both of these types are chaos monkey extraordinaires. At least, that's how it seems to onlookers. In reality, it's semi-controlled chaos, more or less. Because they are happy to ride their own storm and use that as a weapon in life, it's comforting for them to take a step back and organize their lives. This can be in a very literal sense. I swear both of these types love a good spreadsheet from time to time. They might even enjoy organizing their surroundings, restructuring and rearranging rooms, wardrobes, clearing things out, buying a beautiful new planner, and, well, putting their plans in it. Those kinds of things. It can be weird to see them flex this side of themselves, but it shouldn't be surprising. When they're in this mode, ESFPs can appear like ENTJs, and ENFPs like ESTJs. It can give them psychological comfort in a bigger way in their lives as well. It's almost like these types go through a cyclical process in life where they gradually accumulate more and more chaos, projects, and random life baggage. Then, by bringing in their TE, they start to streamline things, to cut things or people out, to become more pragmatic, decisive, and goal-oriented. It gives them comfort because it allows them to trim away the excess fat of their life. The stuff that might have been fun at the time, but ultimately isn't serving them anymore. INFP and INTP, introverted sensing. INFPs and INTPs get psychological comfort from, um, well, comfort. As I've said before about both of these types in some form, they often desire intellectual variety, but physical routine. Because neither of these types are exponents of the physically forceful, aggressive, and energetic approach to the outside world, nor do they value the TE kind of organizing, they need a way to keep their life on track and somewhat under control. Both of these types like to indulge, or should I say re-indulge, in known pleasures. That way, they have the pleasure itself, but also the anticipatory pleasure as well, since they know how good it's going to be. This physical repetition, which shows up in the form of routines and habits often, liberates them to be more explorative in other ways. When they come back from their imaginative adventures, or, to be fair to them, actual adventures too, sometimes, their external environment and day-to-day -day activities are there in their right place so to speak. Once they remember that they actually need to feed themselves, or are struck by an initially curious and hard-to-identify sensation, which they will later recognize as sheer starvation, they can
can quickly use that habit and repetition and routine and eat something that they know they like, as an example. I also think that as time goes on, these types will want to catalogue things more, especially their thoughts and ideas. Instead of being random and scattered with them, they will organise and store them better. There'll be this sense that they want to hold on to things, crystallise and concretise what's going on in their heads. Feeling like they're capturing and not losing their ideas and insights is also quite comforting to them. ISTPs and ISFPs. Introverted intuition. Another very underrated third slot function. As time goes on and they develop and mature, both of these types will be like hybrids of sensing and intuition because they'll have so much balance between those two things. Naturally, ISTPs and ISFPs are happy to take things one day at a time. Of course, we all have obligations and responsibilities in life, but I've heard from people of both types that an ideal day for them is one where they get up and decide there and then what they're going to do, depending on what mood they're in, or what thing is capturing their interest that day. There's an easygoing, chill, and cool vibe to them. They're not trying to force the issue, but if issues get forced on them, they can handle it. As time goes on, they'll start to gain more comfort in developing a life plan for themselves. It doesn't have to be ultra-concrete, but they'll gain enjoyment from the sense that they're on a path, that their actions have coordination, cohesion, direction, and purpose. It gives them comfort because they can now focus in the moment, knowing that they are building towards something, something fulfilling and satisfying. It's about narrowing down on things in an NI way, and feeling security because of that. Both types learn a great deal from A, experiencing life directly, but B, picking up on recurring patterns that they encounter and observe. That process of finding the abstract principles at play underneath their usual realism is exciting for them. It's also comforting because it reaffirms that they're getting benefits beyond simply the activities themselves. They're learning concepts, ideas, patterns. They're conceptualizing things in abstract and sometimes symbolic ways. I think both types can manifest this in the things they create as well, should they be that way inclined. This NI, pattern collection and collation, gives them an underratedly philosophical nature and is the source of much of their insights. Because the abstract aspect of them is grounded in the sensory, in experience, their insights, ideas and conclusions tend to be much more reliable. This YouTube channel has a Discord server, which may or may not be a social experiment designed to see how the types interact when all squeezed together into one corner of the internet. Please do feel free to join me and everyone else in the experiment, I mean on the server. The link is down below in the description of the video. And if you're watching this video and you're about to join the server and you haven't subscribed, you may as well do that too.